for CLSA's Indonesia research head. He and his team were ranked second for equities coverage by Institutional Investors Poll for 2009. He's with us live today from our Jakarta studio. Nick, a very good morning to you. Thanks for coming on the show. I want to start off with this headline that you have in your latest report, uh, Inflate Away. Tell us what you mean and what it means in the context of Indonesia uh, as we begin this new decade. Well, I, I don't think it's any surprise there's going to be a significant amount of money printing again this year. A lot of people are talking about inflation picking up, and that's going to be good for e uh, commodity-based economies such as Indonesia. And we certainly have the benefit of history so here. Over the... Go ahead, Nick. Sorry. Well, so, for instance, you're starting to see coal prices already approaching $100 a tonne here. The coal producers in Indonesia um, are doing very well at the moment as a result of that. We're going to get into some of those picks in a moment. I want to stick with the macro situation uh, right now. We've seen a quite a remarkable turnaround uh, in the past decade. And you noted, interestingly, that Indonesian stocks in U.S. dollar terms have returned over 183 percent in the past decade. S&P actually falling about 25 percent. What's your outlook on equities uh, as we begin 2010 and obviously as we move forward uh, through the remaining years? Well, it's been a, f a fantastic decade for Indonesian stocks, uh, coming from an exceptionally low base at the start of last decade. And I think, that obviously, the story is a lot more well-known than it was back then, and certainly uh, a, a, a many investors are a lot more comfortable with buying into the story. But Indonesia swum against the tide for a long period of time now. We export less overseas than we did 10 years ago. Uh, we're also a lot less leveraged in the economy uh, relative to a lot of other countries around the world which have uh, got themselves more leveraged, and that's caused a lot of the problems that you're seeing in the world at the moment. So Indonesia's looking to be in a very good position, I think, for the next three to five years, certainly, as it can grow its own uh, infrastructure and domestic economy. And what kind of gains were we talking about for this year? You noted in your report about 17 percent. Are we likely to see gains in excess of that? It's quite likely, uh, but that, that would be pr primarily driven by the commodity sector. Uh, a lot of people are talking about a, an excess push-up in commodity-based stocks in the first half of this year. I think there's going to be a lot more volatility. Um, certainly very few people at the start of last year would have expected to see anything like the gains that we saw in Indonesian equities last year, which was about 125 per cent. So um, it's likely to see that we will surpass quite comfortably the, the 3,000 index level, particularly if this uh, money printing continues at a pace as what we've seen in the last 12 months. So as we find ourselves in this reflationary environment, what would the sell calls be? Well, it's going to be very tricky. As, you know, as you can see, as soon as anyone tries to withdraw the liquidity uh, pr priming that they've been taking out of the markets in the developed economies, that has a big impact on the deflationary impact. And again, commodities are going to be the, the stocks that would be the biggest uh, hit by that. So, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a going to be a lot more, I think, volatile for investors. It won't be a buy and hold strategy. It will be a buy and trade strategy, and uh, that will give some good returns. But, you know, a lot of this, the sectors that uh, are doing badly here in, in the country are really, there's not too many sectors that, that are struggling at the moment at this point in time, or at least not in the listed universe. We're going to get into some of your picks uh, when we come back from the break, but I just want to get your sense of the political situation there. Uh, is it largely stabilized from your view? Are you confident uh, that the new cabinet is functioning well? Uh, is corruption, uh, does corruption seem to be fading away? What's your sense of the political situation there, and how should investors be viewing it? Well, I, I, cor corruption's really going to be a long story for Indonesia. It's, an, it's a generational issue. Uh, the Anti-Corruption Commission has, looks like it's come through the, the eye of the storm uh, on the pressure to undermine it, but that's still going to be going on for some time. They need to get back down to business. Uh, in terms of the cabinet itself, we really haven't seen too much coming out from them lately, but I would expect that a lot more stability out of Indonesia in the next few years, pretty much to what we've seen for the last three to four years out of Indonesia itself. And that was by itself a big surprise, and hopefully that will continue going forward. 
Want to get into some of your conviction calls now, give some investors ideas of what they may consider buying your latest picks, Adaro, Indo Cement, uh, Bank Central Asia. Let's begin with Indo Cement, uh, Indonesia's second biggest cement maker. Curious what you find compelling about the company, why you like it compared to other cement stocks uh, there in Indonesia. Well, it's had a fantastic run, and uh, it's certainly it's going to be a lot more difficult to see the similar gains last year as what we will see in 2010. Uh, but I would point out that you know the, it is adding capacity. Uh, it is an oligopoly type industry. You are going to see super normal returns, uh, returns on equity of 30 percent, some of the highest profit margins across all of Asia for the cement companies in Indonesia. So in, in that environment with uh, cement probably at the core of the building out for the infrastructure that this country will be doing over the next three to five years, then uh, the cement companies are still going to be doing very well indeed. Yeah, I was going to say, this is obviously a big infrastructure play, something you noted in your report. The government needs to do more on the infrastructure investment front, and this presumably will benefit companies like Indo Cement, right? Yeah, it's always been a glass half empty, half full on infrastructure for Indonesia. It's pretty easy when you're on the ground to see the story, but execution's been very problematic. Uh, the government's fiscal deficit last year uh, once again came under what was originally budgeted, with their inability to spend the money e efficiently. So that's always a struggle for the country. Uh, but that's always, I, I still think at the same time, the, the amount of money that uh, and the low defensive position on the government's balance sheet here means that they're going to continue to put more money and try and work towards that, even if they have to outsource the infrastructure mm -hmm. spending to the private sector to get that done. Nick, I'm going to ask you to hold tight.